Welcome to Food Exposed, where each week we look at the story behind what's on your plate. I'm your host, Jackie Keller, and today we're talking about sports. You know, over the past 26 years, heading Los Angeles' leading healthy food company, NutriFit, I've had the privilege of working with professional athletes, both men and women, in all kinds of sports. Athletes like Ryan Miller, the ice hockey player, Brian Goodell, the Olympic swimmer, horse racing jockey Aaron Greider, a boxing heavyweight former champion Fernando Vargas, baseball star Kevin Tolan, and Olympic speed skater Michael Hubbs. Each of their needs has varied greatly, as their sports do. It's a complicated situation, and everybody's needs are slightly different. So today, I'd like to talk about some of the leading tips that sports nutritionists like Nancy Clark tell us uh, that are really the key to how to train effectively and fuel yourself for sports. One of Nancy's first tips is to make sure that you have a carbohydrate-rich breakfast, uh, adequate protein, adequate carbohydrates, enough to fuel your sport. She also suggests that you keep your uh, post and uh, pre and post workout snacks wholesome and balanced. Athletes generally need more carbohydrate at each meal, but you also have to make sure you get enough rest and enough sleep, which is oftentimes a problem. Spread your calories throughout the day. Uh, make sure that all food rep groups are adequately represented in each of your meals and drink water constantly. Hydration is a major issue with all of us, but particularly for professional athletes who lose so much water through evaporative sweat. Following these guidelines will help you get the most out of your workout and speed you towards your performance goal. My guest today is Maggie Vesey. Maggie is an NCAA all-time All-American runner. She's competed twice in the World Championships, winning the women's 800-meter event in a time of under two minutes, one minute, 57 seconds for 800 meters. She is one of the fastest women in the world, quite literally, and is sponsored by Team New Balance. She's ranked among the top 20 fastest women in the world and among the top five fastest United States runners. Maggie, welcome to Food Exposed. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know everybody is so curious about uh, understanding basically what makes Maggie run. Tell us about it. Well, uh, I've always been very naturally athletic. Um, it was obvious from a very young age that that was one of the gifts that I had been given. Uh, I tried many different sports. I tried Little League and soccer. Um, and just the underlying uh, factor in all of those was that I was a really fast runner. So uh, while I wasn't necessarily like the best with ball handling skills in <laughs> soccer or the best at hitting a baseball I'm in baseball. Sure you're, I'm sure you're probably downplaying those skills too. Well, it was, I could get to the ball faster than anybody or if I got on base, I could steal bases. But, you know, it was the key skills that you need to have in those sports were not, you know, very, um, I wasn't naturally inclined to those. Okay. So my mom had me go out for track and field and I wasn't really interested in it at first, which is um, kind of funny because now I do it professionally. Uh, but I just started winning races, and uh, I really liked winning, so <laughs> I kept up with it. Well, I guess, um, now how many years have you been running professionally? I've been running professionally since about 2009. Okay, okay. And I, I'm curious because I know um, there's a lot of uh, myth about whether exercise makes you hungrier or less hungry. Are you hungrier after you train? I would say definitely I do feel hunger pains after training. Um, some of the sessions are particularly grueling. I think one of the most important things is 
to not let yourself get hungry, though. Um, I feel like anybody in my family or any of my peers would tell you that if I get hungry, it's a little bit nasty. So <laughs> I think um, while I do, I do feel like I'm hungrier after training, um, one of the most important things to do is to immediately start recovering all the things that you've depleted during a session. So that's one of the things that I try to focus on. Do you find that Nancy Clark's uh, tips, the ones about pre and post snacks and the ones about um, you know maintaining your calories throughout the day have helped you at all? Definitely. Um, you know, before I work out, I would never go into a workout without putting something in my stomach first. I always have a a really hard time with the thought of your body eating itself. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> that <laughs> idea of like inner cannibalism. Um, <laughs> so I um, always try to have something with like a little bit of carb, a little bit of protein, um, and definitely I'm hydrating. Before I go into workout, I'm giving, I, there's something with athletes that's important is timing. So I would never have something like that and then um, wait like five minutes and then go out because it might end up on the track again in a different <laughs> form. <laughs> so I just try to um, give myself maybe 45 minutes before I start training. And um, definitely afterwards, you've depleted so much energy at stores. And um, depending on the climate that you're in, I did a lot of training in Texas. And at that point, you know, it would actually salt our waters and things like wow. that because you've sweat so much. Uh, wow. So you do have to be really um, in tune with um, what you're asking your body to do and then, you know, replacing it with the necessary um, ingredients afterwards. Do you have to watch your weight? Do you have to be careful? <laughs> Is it hard to maintain your weight, even with all that energy expenditure? I think one of the uh, hardest things to face was it's not just all about exercising. I'm somebody that definitely would like to have it just all be about exercise and then I can eat whatever I want, but I definitely came to the realization that you actually can control your weight a lot more through diet than you can with exercise. If you had true. to choose That's between so one, true. you would probably, and you don't want, I mean, you want your body to be very balanced and harmonious and you want to exercise and be mindful of your diet. But if there, if it came down to it and you had to make a choice in weight control, I think it would be diet first. Okay. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to worry about that. But what about when you're not training? What do you like to eat when you're not training? Do you just go out and splurge? Do you have fun? Do you, do you toss down a glass of wine or two? Right. <laughs> um, I, um, I definitely will allow myself some of those, you know, no-no foods that I think we're all very familiar with. I am particularly partial to pizza. Oh so. my. <laughs> but I think, um, one of the things that you start learning about your body and um, is that even eating those unhealthy foods, while they might taste good, like the way that you feel afterwards, it's not really worth it. So mm. I might, after a season, allow myself some of those no-no foods, but then it's pretty apparent um, quite quickly that I just don't like the way that it makes me feel. Okay, so you end up sort of self-regulating as a result. Right. But I will, I mean, I definitely am a girl that likes a glass of red wine every now and again. <laughs> so it's just with anything, moderation, you know, right. keeping yourself in check. <laughs> right, right. What, what tips do you have for people? You know, you're a professional athlete. You've kind of won the battle, essentially. I mean, you're still out there winning every race, uh, but you've won the battle of, of trying to find that balance for yourself and trying to find harmony between exercise and, and eating. What tips do you have for people like me who are trying to lean out, um, maintain their weight, but still maintain muscle mass? Right. Um, I think you kind of have to play a little part with science and then a little part with just how you are in your life. Um, I'm somebody who, if you have this at your availability to be able to go do some blood testing and just kind of see where your body is at, see what's going on in there and see if any needs are addressed because sometimes if you are having trouble fighting a little bit of uh, a weight issue, it can be something that's going on with your body that's not letting you, it's not facilitating that. So I think knowing what's going on in your body first is really important. And then after that, you know, I just think striking a balance is very important. You know, you're not gonna do anything that you don't like doing. You're not gonna want it. For a while, you might be able to get away with eating things that 
you know, you don't like and, um, but it's, you're seeing results in your body, but if you're not liking the way that you're feeling, I think that you're probably gonna stop doing that. So my advice would be just to um, listen to your body and definitely have a very vegetable rich diet. Uh, that's something that I've incorporated into mine and you definitely see just your body taking on like a healthier cycle and things um, and it definitely helps you lose weight as well so <laughs> um, <laughs> but just being in tune with yourself and um, allowing yourself to be happy and healthy and I think that once you start seeing results and feeling better you're going to be naturally inclined Great. to keep up with it. Yeah, success breeds success, right? right. <laughs> well, I know that um, post-recovery meals are extremely important in an athlete's diet and making sure that you refuel quickly uh, after you've had a training session with the proper nutrition so that, as you say, your body doesn't eat itself, you know, you're not <laughs> cannibalizing all that lean muscle tissue that you're building is extremely important. So I thought today we might um, share one of I know was one of your favorite meals when you were with us as a client, the pasta with turkey meatballs. I do love that one. All right, <laughs> let's go make it. All right. So, you know, today we're making one of my favorite post-recovery meals, and it's actually one of my favorite meals of all times. It's a good mean, one. Who doesn't love pasta, right? I couldn't find anybody that didn't like it. And there's so many varieties of pasta out there. So for those of you who are trying to follow a gluten-free diet right now or looking for alternatives to wheat, please know that this recipe is quick, it's easy, it can be made with virtually any type of pasta, but instead of going into the meat, realm with respect to ground beef. What we're using today is ground turkey because it's leaner meat, it has less cholesterol, less fat naturally, although you have to watch the level of fat even in your ground turkey um, right. because there are fattier ones than, than others. And what I really like best about it is that it's simple and quick. And I know um, from our work together right. that getting food in quickly that is easy to digest, not heavy, not hard on the stomach, not hard on the body is really important, right? Very important. So I thought we would show people um, sort of the key ingredients of what's in this pasta with turkey meatballs dish. First of all, 100% um, whole wheat pasta. Again, you could use uh, rice pasta, you could use something made from corn. It doesn't have to be wheat. If you're looking for gluten-free pastas, there's shelves and shelves of them now that you can find. But today we're doing a whole wheat pasta and we're using um, a homemade marinara sauce. Now, you can buy marinara sauces. There's dozens of them out on the market. But make sure if you're buying something that you haven't made yourself, that it's low in sodium because although you mentioned uh, sodium being an issue for athletes because of your sweat loss. Right, depending on where you're training. Right, you still have to be mindful of not having too much, I would right. guess. You right, right. Because too much salt, you hold in the your water. water. Attention. And that must be hard on an athlete not to be able to sweat and pour it off. Right, it's all such a delicate balance, so. It is. Well, I've made the meatballs ahead of time. And um, Tasty. you can make these ahead of time just like I did and freeze them beautifully. So that if, for example, you had a mind to have barbecued meatballs instead of uh, marinara meatballs, you could do that. Or you could have meatballs with um, any kind of sauce that you, it had a fancy for sweet and sour, barbecue. There's all kinds of ways you can do that. But let's heat up this pasta with turkey meatball dish. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil into the skillet. And then we'll put in our meatballs and let them get brown. Now, step back, because we don't want to. <laughs> Here we go. And again, the beauty of having pre-made the meatballs is that if you get back from a run or a training session right. and you really just want to get some protein and good quality carbs into your system, and I think the rule is within about a two half hours, an hour, half I would an hour. say, right. Yeah, so you want to have the stuff ready to go. You really do. And then um, add some of your sauce. In this case, we're doing this marinara, which is just a lovely yeah. low-sodium marinara. And... Um, I even pre-cook my pasta. I like to do this ahead of time because when I get home, 
I'm not training like you. Right. But I don't want to wait for the water to boil. I mean, right. isn't that the most frustrating right. thing? Right. Then you find yourself eating in between when you're going to eat just to just stave <laughs> off some hunger. So that's really smart. So if we pre cook the pasta and then wash it really well, the starch on the outside of the pasta is washed off and the pasta can sit in a food safe container in your refrigerator for a day or two. Right. Do you ever snack on uh, pasta at all? I don't usually. I have try to do vegetables and fruit, but... Good girl. I, <laughs> if it was around handy, I probably would eat some of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we're just going to heat this up. And literally, that's all it takes. I mean, if you have some fresh basil to put in there, that would be great. Um, and uh, add a little bit of more flavor to it. These meatballs were made with one of my salt and sugar-free spices, uh, one of the blends that I've designed that um, help make food taste tasty without adding salt, without adding sugar, without adding any fillers. And um, it does give a lot of flavor. And just like that, now, um, obviously, what's missing here? The garlic? vegetable. Oh. <laughs> with so much garlic. <laughs> you know, garlic is great for you, too. It really is. And I kind of overdo it, though. You can't overdo garlic. And so. what happens when you overdo yeah, it? a little bit of a funky tummy, but, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like it. You know what cures that funky tummy? What? Please tell me. Something else that would make this dish green, which I don't have here today, but I would add a lot of parsley to your oh, I have a lot very of garlicky things. Okay. Because parsley is not only great for your breath, which is a natural breath freshener, oh, good, which is always good to breath. know. <laughs> yeah, it will, really, truly. I mean, after a heavy garlic meal, just eat a plate of parsley. Okay. But the other reason is that it is a good digestive aid. Oh, perfect. So you could easily kind of kill two birds with one stone, take care of the garlic breath, take care of the funky tummy, right. and still have your garlic and enjoy <laughs> it too. So, um, But you are going to add a vegetable quickly. in there. Yeah, you would want to add a vegetable in here. You'd want to have some broccoli maybe, or um, what are some of your favorites, Maggie? Um, some of my favorite vegetables, I always do bell peppers, a ton of bell peppers. I really like asparagus. I really like broccoli. Broccoli, I think, would probably go best with this, though. Right, right. Yeah, definitely. And the bell peppers, too. Right. You know, a lot of Italian dishes I have bell peppers. I probably throw some cayenne peppers. flakes in there, too. I like a little spicy. <laughs> yeah, hot and spicy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> She's fast, hot, and spicy. Okay, guys. <laughs> That's it. All right. So are you ready to taste? Do you remember? Yes, oh, I am so ready. When was the last time you trained? I trained this, this morning. morning. Mm -hmm. All right, I knew this that. morning, I right. I knew that answer. And, and you probably had already a little post-recovery meal. Of course I did. Good girl, good girl. <laughs> well, there you go, Maggie. Thank you so much. All right. All right, so. Let's just, get some meatball. Just a little meatball and. A little bit of tiny pasta. Tiny bit of pasta. I know you're careful. How hot is this going to be? Good? It's so good. Oh, good, good. It's so good. Thank well, you. You're welcome. And thank you so much for coming today. Thank you today. so much for having you me. You know, I know everybody wants to know when's your next race. Okay. And how can they find you? Uh, my next race is February 1st in North Carolina. And I have a website, maggievesi.com. I also can be found at newbalance.com. And, of course, I'm participating in all the social media outlets. So you can follow me at Maggie Vesey, Maggie Vesey on Instagram. All that good stuff. Great. Well, thank you again for being with us. It's been a delight. Good luck thank in your you. next race. Thank I get so February much. 1st, right? February 1st, coming up. All right. So we'll be watching you run. Thank you. And uh, I couldn't um, be more delighted to have had you with me today. I'm really happy that I could be here. Thank you for having me. I have a little story to share with you um, here to conclude our show today. And it's a, an old parable, which I still find very relevant, and I think you will too. It goes something like this. One evening, an old Cherokee uh, was speaking to his grandson about the battle that goes on inside of people. He talked about an evil wolf and a good wolf. They both live inside us. The evil wolf is filled with anger, filled with envy, filled with jealousy, filled with sorrow, filled with resentment, with lies, with false pride, with superiority and ego. 
The other wolf, the good wolf, is filled with humility, with love, with peace, with joy, with benevolence, with kindness, with truth, compassion, and faith. So as the grandfather was speaking to the grandson, the little boy sat back and he absorbed it and he said to his grandfather, well, grand grandfather, which wolf wins the battle? And the old Cherokee looked at his grandson and he smiled and said, very simply, the wolf that wins is the wolf that you feed. So the moral of the story, of course, is to be sure to feed the positivity in your life by feeding the good rather than the evil, by feeding the truth rather than the lies, by feeding the joy rather than the sorrow. You unleash the possibilities for positivity in your life and allow more of that to happen. If you don't feed the evil, it doesn't flourish within you. Thanks for coming today. Thanks for joining me on Food Exposed. I hope you'll share this with your friends, with your families, with your associates, and I hope you'll follow me on JackieKeller.com. Tune in next week to EmpowerMe.tv and uh, join me for Food Exposed. For more Food Exposed, check me out on EmpowerMe.tv. And until next week, remember, make food your best friend and exercise your companion for life.